Mauna Loa is erupting for the first time in nearly 40 years, spewing potentially harmful clouds of smoke and ash. Volcanic eruptions can be devastating and harmful. They have the ability to eject heated tephra clouds from a volcano's side or top. These scorching storms consume practically everything in their path as they race down steep slopes. As with snow, volcanic ash that is thrown into the air will eventually fall back to Earth. If ash piles up high enough, it can suffocate plants, animals, and people. In the presence of cold water, such as that found in streams or the melting of snow and ice, mud flows can form. Mud flows have buried entire communities near erupting volcanoes. Scientists and the entire world are experiencing fear and worry as the largest active volcano on Earth is erupting for the first time in 38 years. What do you anticipate will occur after this volcano ultimately erupts? Which volcanic eruption will cause the continents to break up? Let's find out. Mauna Loa Volcano on the island of Hawaii, also known as the Big Island, which has lain dormant for 38 years while watching over its extremely active sister volcano Kilauea, has recently awakened. Not always has this sleeping giant been silent. Mauna Loa is the largest single volcano on Earth, taking up more than half of the Big Island's total area and having a volume of an estimated 19,000 cubic miles. The volcano's base touches the ocean floor at a depth of 16,400 feet, despite the top caldera being 13,679 feet above sea level. The immense mass of Mauna Loa has pushed the crust of the Earth upward by an additional 26,200 feet. Mauna Loa is merely one of the Big Island's five volcanoes, which also include Kohala, Hualalai, Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, and Kilauea. A tectonic plate passes over a mantle plume, a heated, buoyant portion of the Earth's mantle that melts as it rises upward, bringing magma to the surface to build the island and the rest of its eponymous archipelago. Nearly 90% of the volcano's surface is covered in lava that has erupted during the previous 4,000 years, although not all Mauna Loa eruptions are the same. The summit caldera is where Mauna Loa eruptions normally begin, however. Occasionally, they may shift to the northeast or southwest rift zones. Lavas that erupt from vents along the southwest rift zone can race downhill at speeds up to 6 miles per hour with no warning because the southern and western slopes of Mauna Loa are substantially steeper than the north and eastern flanks. This happened in 1950 when lava flows closed off access to areas of the island and destroyed hundreds of structures in just three hours after reaching the water. Because of the relatively gentle slope, lava eruptions from the northeast rift zone often do not move as quickly. Lava flows from the northeast rift zone might someday endanger surrounding settlements, although it would take a lot longer for that to happen. For instance, it took nine months for lava flows to approach the city of Hilo after vents in the northeast rift zone of Mauna Loa erupted in 1880. Mauna Loa has been highly active in recorded history, erupting 39 times since records first started being kept in the early 19th century, despite not erupting for nearly 40 years. In the past, Mauna Loa eruptions have often only lasted a few weeks, though they have on occasion lasted several years. Mauna Loa erupted roughly every five years prior to 1950. Mauna Loa only erupted twice more during the 20th century after the Southwest Rift Zone eruption in 1950 due to a change in the volcano's behavior. These eruptions occurred in 1975 and 1984. The 1984 eruption started as a one-day fissure eruption at the summit caldera and moved downrift along the northeast rift zone, where lava flows continued to progress for three weeks and by the time the eruption was over, had come within four miles of Hilo. Why is this eruption happening? Between 2.5 and 8 kilometers, 1.5 to 5 miles, below Mauna Loa, a reservoir of magma has been slowly and unevenly replenishing since 1984. Several significant seismic swarms, which are collections of numerous minor earthquakes that happen quickly one after the other, occurred at that time, probably due to the magma buildup. When magma is added to a storage reservoir, the stress distribution inside the volcano's body can shift, which can result in earthquakes. The rift zones may unclamp as a result of these earthquakes, allowing magma to move upward and erupt, according to one theory. 
In recent years, short-lived seismic swarms beneath the Mauna Loa summit had gotten more frequent, but they suddenly became much more frequent towards the middle of September 2022. Between 20 and 60 earthquakes each day, most measuring magnitude 2 and the greatest measuring magnitude 4.2 rattled the summit region every day of the month of November. For the summit reservoir of Mauna Loa, ground deformation measurements show a general trend of inflation, indicating that lava had been accumulating since at least December 2018. Although the cause of this fresh eruption is still unknown, ground deformation records of Mauna Loa's summit demonstrate that there was a period of fast inflation before the eruption. It's probable that the several hundred recent earthquakes combined their effects to create favorable circumstances for magma to climb, resulting in the 2022 eruption. Does this have anything to do with the Kilauea volcano's activity? The quick response is probably not. The Hawaiian hot point feeds both Kilauea and Mauna Loa. When the hotspot's supply of magma doubled between 2003 and 2007, the ground at both Mauna Loa and Kilauea swelled, showing that magma was being fed into both volcanoes from the mantle, leading scientists to hypothesize that there may be some very deep relationship between the two volcanoes. There is a geodetic relationship between the two volcanoes, according to reports. When magma builds up in Mauna Loa's shallow reservoir and the ground expands, strains from the volume rise can prevent magma from climbing into the Kilauea summit reservoir, decreasing the likelihood of an eruption. However, both volcanoes are currently erupting. The eruption of Kilauea is limited to its summit's Halamauma'u crater. Lavas from the Kilauea volcano differ geochemically from those from Mauna Loa. The lava from Mauna Loa is also less viscous or runnier. Therefore, scientists largely concur that Klauea and Mauna Loa have independent magma plumbing systems, despite the fact that Kilauea is situated on the latter's southeast flanks. Therefore, it is quite improbable that this eruption is connected to the current lava lake activity at Kilauea Volcano. What is likely to occur next? The eruption is still continuing, and activity is not anticipated to pick back up at the top caldera or at the rift zone above the fissure that is currently active. As long as magma is fed to the fissure opening, the northeast rift zone's moderate slopes produce slowly moving lava flows that often advance hundreds to thousands of feet every day. However, lava flows are only one of the volcanic risks that an eruption might bring about. As volcanic ash, Pele's hair and Vog, hazy air pollution brought on by the emission of volcanic gases, can be transported over long distances depending on weather patterns, poor air quality may have an impact on island residents and visitors downwind of active fissures. Volcanic ash is made up of microscopic bits of fragmented glass created by lava during an eruption. The Hawaii Interagency VOG Information Dashboard receives daily updates with regard to VOG and wind forecasts. Scientists examine a volcano's historical behavior for indicators of how a current eruption may develop. Activity should continue along the northeast rift zone if the latest eruption at Mauna Loa exhibits behavior similar to earlier eruptions. However, it is impossible to predict how long the eruption will occur or whether it will continue to follow the same patterns as previous eruptions. Mauna Loa's secrets will only become clear with time. It can't keep the magma at bay indefinitely. Seismometers near the volcano's top began to register increased activity. When researchers sought to pinpoint where the seismicity was coming from, they discovered that it was coming from a shallower and shallower depth which is a surefire sign that the magma is rising. There are two rift zones at the surface of Mauna Loa, one on the southwest and one on the northeast side of the mountain. These are remnants of earlier eruptions during which lava streams that were veined and incandescent pooled for miles down the hill. An unpopulated region of the island can be reached from the northeast rift zone. Several settlements on the Kona coast are reached by the southwest rift zone. Magma spurted through rock fractures at the mountain's peak, starting the eruption, which filled the caldera's bowl-like shape. Scientists were unsure which of the two the eruption would choose this time because previous eruptions had started at the summit and progressed to a rift zone. While the southwest could put thousands of people in danger, the northeast flank would guarantee safety. Dr. Stovall claimed that even after the eruption had begun, 
We didn't know the eruption had moved to the northeast zone until we had eyes in the air, flying over the rift zone and saw the lava flow out. Since then, the lava flow has slowed as it descends the mountain's flanks, but it still poses a threat to cross Saddle Road, a busy road on the Big Island. Scientists are unsure of what may happen next as magma continues to erupt from the northeast rift zone, spurting skyward in red fountains. By deploying more monitoring equipment near active zones and gathering more satellite photographs of the mountain's surface, volcanologists and seismologists are attempting to decipher the incoming data. Nobody can predict when the next eruption will take place. This is the first Mauna Loa eruption in some Big Island volcanologists' lifetimes. However, 38 years are quite brief on geological timescales, as Dr. Solomon pointed out. It's basically something that has been happening for tens of thousands to millions of years, and it won't stop. The magma cannot be contained for all time. On the other hand, a new ocean is developing in Africa and might split the continent. Even while the anticipated major break is unlikely to occur in our lifetime, its effects are already visible. Since the volcanic eruption in 2005, Afar has seen a significant transformation. The desert features cracks filled with cooled down molten rock. Scientists can now detect the beginnings of this transformation clearly because of cutting edge satellite data. You see, Material from deep within the Earth begins to move to the surface and form oceanic crusts in the ridges when the tectonic plates separate. This is exciting because the majority of these events take place in the ocean, making it challenging for researchers to observe them. However, they are able to learn more about the movements of tectonic plates because of the rift in the Afar Desert. Dr. James Hammond, a seismologist at the University of Bristol, has been studying the formation of a new ocean in the Afar Desert. He claims that some of the territory is below sea level and that a 20-meter-long piece of land in Eritrea is all that stands between it and the water. A new ocean will begin to form if the ocean is able to flood the fractures. Some areas of Ethiopia will be torn apart by the floodwaters. They predicted that Somalia and some of southern Ethiopia will float away and form Indian Ocean Islands. In light of everything that was going on in Ethiopia, media attention was peaked once more in April 2018, when a sizable crack development appeared in the Kenyan Rift Valley. Numerous sources have interpreted it as evidence that the African continent is truly divided into two sections. The fissures appeared at the same time as several earthquakes that were occurring frequently at the time. A new tectonic plate boundary was also formed where the fissures were seen. People automatically concluded that this situation was similar to that in Ethiopia because of this. But after further inquiry, scientists discovered that something altogether else was to blame for these enormous land fractures. It turns out that soil erosion beneath the surface, rather than plate tectonic movements, caused the crack to emerge. Heavy rains that had fallen in the area contributed to the erosion. Deep layers of loose volcanic ash that had been accumulated in the Kenya Rift Valley by earlier volcanic eruptions had been washed away by precipitation. The breaking up of continents is not new. In actuality, the continents and oceans that we are familiar with did not exist 300 million years ago. A map then would seem very different from what we have today. There was only one enormous landmass known as Pangaea and one enormous global ocean known as Panthalassa. 100 million years later, Pangaea began to fragment, dividing into the continents we see today. The Panthalassa was divided and moved to several oceans, and it appears that the division of landmass will take place once more right now. The African continent will change into a collection of archipelagos around a sizable portion of the original continent in a few million years. Scientists conclude that it is a great privilege for us to live to see an ocean form, Researchers and scientists will be better equipped to comprehend environmental risks, including the effects of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions thanks to this phenomenon. But did you know that there are other regions that could split off in the future besides Africa? It seems that rifts and fissures are growing everywhere in the world. Iceland, which is separated from Ethiopia by 8,000 kilometers, is also in danger. Iceland can be found between Greenland and Norway. Because of the opposing scenery, it is known as the Land of Fire and Ice. There are numerous volcanoes there. Iceland is situated between the tectonic plates of Europe and North America. 
It has been discovered that these two plates are migrating apart, and Iceland may be at risk if this continues. According to estimates, the nation could be divided into three sections. In the Thingvellir area, which is known for its volcanic and tectonic activity, there is a crack. The surface of the plain is riddled with fissures, and more are forming each time. Surprises abound on this planet. One is prompted to consider and speculate about the role that people may have played in producing these geological shifts. It is past time for us to begin protecting the environment more effectively so that future generations can continue to enjoy its benefits. The phenomena taking place in the African desert of afar is said to have been the first continental separation to affect and engage modern human existence. Who would have guessed that a new ocean would emerge from one of the driest and hottest deserts on Earth? Thanks for watching another episode. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.